Hi guys, welcome to this module on Microsoft Access. In this module we're going to look at creating queries. We're going to focus on select queries. We're going to look at how to do a parameter query, a between and and query, and a basic query. So first of all, just recap the table we have here. So address details is just a list of addresses. We're going to create queries to interrogate this information. So if I close that one down, to create a query, you click on create and you have the queries here on the ribbon, query wizard and query by design. So for these examples, I'm going to use query by design. I will come back to the query wizard in a later session. Query by design. When you click that option, you get a list of tables, the tables that you have in your database. The one I want to interrogate first of all is address details and I'm going to double click on it, which puts it in the query behind close this window and then if I make this slightly larger so you can see all the fields these are all the fields that are in the table address details now I need to get these fields into this grid down below this is called a query by example grid there are several ways to do that I will go through each way but first of all my preferred way is to double click on the title which will highlight them all and then you can click and drag and drop into the first column and they will cascade across. Now, if I run this query as it is at the moment, by clicking run on the ribbon, it shows me exactly the same information as it would in a table. If I go back into design, what you have in this query grid is first of all the field across the top, the field name, which is what we've just brought down. The table that field is coming from, and in this case it is the same table, but quite often it's not the same table there are many tables um, represented in the query by example grid as you get more into access an option to sort the columns and now this is where you would do a query to do multiple columns sort if you wanted to do that a small tick box which says show basically if I take the title one off so I can show you how this works so the tick is not on title if I run this query the title column is not displayed if I go back into design and put the tick back on and rerun the query, now, now it is displayed. And then below that you have the criteria row and the all row, or many all rows. And that is where you interrogate the data. So the first one is I'm going to ask this query to return people that live in Bradford. So I type Bradford. I click away and you can see these two little quotes the computer's put there. That means the computer recognizes that as a short text field. If I run this query now, it should only show me Bradford and it does. Now you do queries because you want this information all the time. If you just wanted that information ad hoc, you would just use the filters which we looked at in a previous session. So I do want this information all the time. So I am going to save this query, click in the save button. QRY is a qualifier and it is looking at the table, TBL, address, details, and it is filtering for Bradford. That's how I like to name my queries. So you can see it's a query looking at the table and the filter it's doing. You can't always achieve that, but where, where you can achieve that, I try and do that. But it's totally up to you how you name things. There is a naming convention with QRY and TBL on, on Microsoft Access Objects. I click OK to that and then just close this one down. It will appear in the query list. Now, if I change somebody to move to Bradford, say from Leeds. So now there's an extra person. And when I close this table down, I just run the query and it picks up the extra person. There is now seven records. There were six before. So once you've created a query, it is dynamic. So let's create another query, have another go. So create query, query by design, double click to add the table, close the box, double click at the top, drag and drop all the columns. So this time, let's have a look for still Bradford on the top line, but underneath on the all row, I also want to see cities of people that live in Leeds. So Bradford or Leeds, run the query. And I'll get both. So there's two for Leeds and six for seven for Bradford. Now I'm going to go back into design because I'm not going to save this one. But in theory, you would save save each of these queries. You'd have planned out 
how you want your data be, to be interrogated. But for this training example, I'm just going to edit this query by example grid. So the next one I want to show you is a date query. I'm going to interrogate the date join field. I want to see everybody who joined, and I'm using the greater than symbol, after the 1st of the 1st, 2010. Now, when I click down below that, you'll get these hashes, which means Axis recognizes that as a date field. If you don't get hashes, and you get the quotes that you saw for Bradford and Leeds, you'll have to stop there, go back to table design, and change the data type to be a date type. If we run this one, it should return everybody who joined after, 20, after the 1st of January 2010, as it does there. I'm not going to save that one. I'm just going to close it off. Now, there's a wildcard symbol you can use, and it's this. If I if I go asterisk and then a 10, that will return anything that ends with a 10. So, And when you click underneath, you can see that it, it uses the word like. If I run that one, it shows me three records of people that joined in 2010. So I'm just going to get that one off. Now, the problem with date fields is that Sometimes it can be quite inflexible. For example, there's a feature that you can use called between and and, and it works like this. If I type, in fact, before I type, I'm just going to zoom that in. So I'm using the, the shift key and the F2 function key to zoom that in so I can see what I'm typing. If I type the word between and then type the first of the first 10 and then the word and and then type the first of the first 19. So I want all dates between those two. I click OK. You get the hashes there. Look, so that's a good sign. If I run that query, I get the right information. The problem is, if I go back into design, I would have to keep changing this query, edit this query to achieve that. Now, a better way to do it is this. If I delete that, it's to create what's called a parameter query and then apply the parameter feature to uh, between and for dates. A basic parameter query is like this. So, we did a query for Bradford. If I wanted a query for every city, I would have to go one for Bradford, one for Leeds, one for Manchester, and so on and so on. And that can be quite time consuming to do. And it will fill up this side with lots of queries that are identical almost. And it takes up memory. A better way would be to use a parameter query. And the parameter query is driven by the square bracket, which on the keyboard is next to the letter P. Inside square brackets, you type a prompt for yourself. So I've just typed enter city. I can't just put the word city because that is the name of the field and that would cause a problem. But watch what happens now. When I run, I type leads, it shows me leads. If I go back into design and run it again, and I'll type Bradford, press an enter instead of OK, but same thing, I get Bradford. Now, what I'm going to do now quickly is create a report based on this so you can see the end product of this whole process. So I am going to save this little query. I'm just going to call this QRY para for now. Click OK to that and then just close this down. And then with this highlighted, I'm going to create a basic report. We'll go through reports in a bit more detail on a later session. But for now, I'm just going to click this option. It's asking me straight away for the city, so I'll go Leeds, because I know there's not that many. And it creates a, a very ugly looking report, which would have to be edited at a later date. But you can see there that there are two records showing Leeds. I'm going to close this report and save this report. Yes, I do. I'm going to put RPT in front of that. RPT. OK. And then that disappears, but it sits underneath reports if you've got this the views for this in objects, which it is at the moment. Now, so there was only two people for leads there, so I am going to add another person for leads. I'm going to change one of these, these Bradford ones back to leads. And you can see now that's leads. So there's an extra one. If I run that report again, I don't need to run the query. The query will run because it's attached to the report. But when I run this, if I type leads or send it as leads, it, there should be three records, and there is three records because it's picked up that other one. So that's how a basic um, parameter works on a single field, like um, I'm just going to design on this. So if I right-click there, I can go into design, because if I double-click, it will run the query. But that's a basic parameter query. Now, if I close this one down and create another query 
create query, add address details, close. Now, the, before I do this next bit, I'll just show you the different ways of getting fields down into the grid. So I've been double clicking at the top and dropping them all down, which is great. And it's my preferred way. But if I do this, I could double click on each field and they would come down. I could drag and drop individual fields and they will come down. I can also click in the column and select the field I want and all of those would come down. All of those are great. Um, if I just delete those ones off, I could also double click on the asterisk at the top, which drops the whole of these down, but you can't see them. But if I run the query, there they are, they're all displayed. You might be thinking, what's the purpose of this? What this is about, if if I if you have got a column of look, columns of information that's off the screen, you're constantly scrolling to the right to see what the criteria is, you might want to look at doing this because this is how it works. If I double click city down and then I type Bradford, no, let's go for Leeds because it's easier to type Leeds. I want to see Leeds. I run, I see Leeds. But I've got a duplicate at the end. It's got no name, but that's the, that's the extra field. So what you do is you go back, you take the tick off this one, so it doesn't show this one, but it still runs to show leads. So what you're doing is you're using these additional fields as your criteria for this list. Just different ways of doing it. I'm just gonna get rid of all that for now. So I'll go back to my normal way of doing it, drag and drop. So I haven't shown you a parameter query, and I want to do that on the date join field. So again, I'm going to do the Shift F2 to zoom up. So now I can type between. And then instead of typing a date, I do the parameter and I type a prompt. Enter the first date. Close the square bracket. Then the word and. Open the square bracket. Enter the Type it right, enter the second date, close the square bracket. Just check that's OK. Click OK to that. Click underneath that. That's OK. Run the query. It's asking me for the first date, so I'm going to go first of the first 10. Enter, first of the first 19. Enter, and then I get the results. Now again, if I save this query, I'll call it um, QRY para one. Okay, close that down. So there are six records there at the moment that match that criteria. If I go to the address details table and change this record to say 2010, that should get added into the list when I re rerun the query. So para one, double click. First of the first 10, first of the first 19. So I get an extra one, one of seven. So it's brought that in. Same process as when we did the basic one with cities. So you build up your queries. They do all the donkey work. They do all the hard work for you. Your base your reports and your reports are your output for Microsoft Access. But that's the end of this module. And the next module, we'll look at some more complicated queries and different ways of doing queries to get the results that you require for your database. But I hope this has been great for you, and I'll see you next time.